What do you find when you dig deep into the depths of the earth? We found a few rare elements like commitment, compassion, a passion for perfection and a vision for a stronger and better tomorrow. That is NMDC. It's not just a pioneering story of one of the world's finest iron ore producers, but a story of leadership with a human touch. depths of the earth to the bottom of hearts, NMDC has touched lives all around, creating wealth, building sustainable opportunities and working towards impacting lives positively. NMDC, harnessing Earth's goodness. We are having a very interesting session. We are starting business session one, building Atmanirbhar Bharat, ensuring make in India, future of steel industries in India. I would request chairperson of the Metals Committee, Bengal Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Mr. Shushim Banerjee, to kindly take it forward from here. So over to you. Okay. <clears throat> so we are honored today to have uh, Mr. Anil Choudhury. Chairman Sail with us for a brief chat session. Uh, 
Mr. Chaudhary, the chairman, said he served for a long period as director of finance before taking over as chairmanship. And I know he has also a very keen interest in all aspects of steel marketing. I find that only in last month, sale production has gone up by 7% and with improvement in total sales and the prices are going up. So today, Mr. Choudhury must be in a very happy mood and uh, we are fortunate to catch him in that happy mood. So, sir, the praise, uh, we have about 20 minutes with us. So I will be putting up to you around... Uh, three to four questions and it need not be that way specified that every question will take five minutes. If you feel you can spend some more time for a particular question, depending on the uh, you know question itself. So my first question will be the COVID-19 pandemic had a disastrous impact on the performance of the economy. Uh, our economy has also suffered. As a major issue in the steel sector, what was sales experience and strategic trusts that you have undertaken to cope with the challenges? Uh, first of all, thank you, Mr. Banerjee, and also the Bengal Chamber of Commerce for uh, giving me this opportunity to interact with uh, all of you. Really, it is my good fortune that I am talking to the uh, uh, audience, which is connected uh, all over the world. Uh, in addition to uh, this mode, virtual mode, they are also there. It is getting uh, streamed live over Facebook and also YouTube, I have been told. So I'm sure it must be reaching a large audience. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. And uh, Mr. Sushim Benati, you all know, and, and uh, all others, you all know that uh, this COVID-19, it has a disastrous impact uh, uh, all over the world. And the Indian economy and the Indian steel industry has not been an uh, exception. And you know, we started recovering uh, after economic slowdown, after auto slowdown, and after elections from no mid November onwards only. And uh, things were going very fine. In uh, December, we had the record sales, not only Steel Authority, but everybody had the record sales. And things were simply getting fine in the month of January, February. But suddenly, in the mid of the February, we realized that there was something amiss. Uh, because we find that the most of the buyers, uh, they, they started delaying their uh, purchases. As a consequence of that, everybody started accumulating inventory uh, from the month of uh, uh, mid uh, 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 from the month of February and March. Of course, immediately after the lockdown, the, the things really went uh, uh, very uh, difficult. And uh, for us, uh, maintaining production and also selling material in the market was very very difficult. But somehow I find that this was the one period when the entire steel industry came together. I remember we had our first video conferencing under the aegis of uh, 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 this Indian Steel Association. We all sat together, all the captains of the industry from private to the public sector, we all sat together and we worked out our strategy, how to uh, uh, take care of production and uh, at the same time, how to uh, cope up with the slowdown in the sales. The challenge before us was that how to maintain the uh, our supply chain to continue with our production. And uh, I must uh, uh, thank Ministry of Steel. They came uh, like uh, uh, very, I would say, uh, handy uh, uh, for us. And I remember the first conference was taken by our the then Secretary of Steel, Mr. Binay Kumar on 23rd. And he told everybody that we should write to them and we should also take up with the state government. Uh, that wherever we are finding problem in supply chain maintenance, uh, uh, that should be taken up. And thereafter, as I said, that uh, we met uh, over Zoom on 25th and we discussed uh, our problems. And that was something which gave us a lot of confidence. No doubt, the period of uh, April and May, it was very, very difficult. Uh, we had the problem in maintaining the production. And at the same time, you all know that the demand in the domestic market, it simply uh, uh, came down to zero. Uh, but somehow, uh, we all, uh, uh, with the help of mutual discussion, we could uh, uh, rationalize the production. And also, one good thing we did, particularly in sale, we did that uh, we continued our supplies to Indian Railway because there was no logistic problem and uh, railways maintained the uh, uh, wagons availability. And whenever we needed their help in uh, carrying the finished product, uh, they did that. And after that, again, when they... Uh, 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 rearrange themselves, we found that there was no problem in getting material uh, through uh, rail. And uh, uh, we did a very fine balancing between domestic sales and the exports. 
uh, of course, during April, there was no domestic sales. It was almost zero. We hardly sold 16,000 tons in the domestic market. And, uh, but we maintained our uh, supplies to Indian Railways. And the inventory till the end of uh, uh, May, it went up to 2 million tons. And that was a very, very difficult task for us that how to uh, maintain a balance between production and the market demand. But somehow uh, we could do that. And despite having the inventory of 2 million ton, uh, we took up with the banks and we could maintain our credit lines. Uh, then came the month of June. And we really started feeling that the lockdown was over or it was getting over. And uh, the market really started giving us the uh, good signals. And uh, you all know from June onwards, there was no looking back. And uh, sale also had its uh, 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 the best June ever in the history of the company. And we sold a lot of material July, August, September. Again, we recorded the uh, best of the sales. And as a consequence of this, we found that there were 31% growth in the sales of the company in the second quarter. Of course, first quarter was a dampener. There was a uh, degrowth to the extent of 37%. But second quarter, that really uh, gave us a uh, good fillip. That uh, good time continued. Like even in the month of October, we had 14% growth in production and uh, uh, almost 25% uh, 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 growth in sales. Then again, in the month of uh, uh, November, uh, we could have the same sales as we had in the uh, last year and there was 7% growth in the uh, uh, production also. But I find that uh, during this difficult time, uh, uh, definitely if we are able to maintain our balance uh, in the domestic market, and the export market and also we are able to ramp up our production rationally uh, any difficult time this was caused by covid but in any difficult time if we are able to do this uh, so certain lessons have been learned which i definitely like to put forth uh, for my uh, viewers today one is that we should always continue to uh, export because once we have a stable export market even if there is some problem in the domestic market uh, we can always fall back to export and also we can have a market which is uh, uh, stable than the uh, domestic market. Second, the maintenance of liquidity for every industry is uh, must and that is very important for the steel industry. So keep dialogue uh, open with your uh, bankers, keep on discussing with them and also tighten the, uh, I would say, uh, the uh, uh, your uh, 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 mouth of the uh, uh, your bag, cash bag. Always tighten the mouth of your cash bag. And this I also learned from the legendary Mr. V. Krishnamurti. He said in difficult time, you, if you are able to take care of, of, of your cash, uh, you have uh, won the battle, uh, at least to the extent of 60% and balance 40%, you can uh, always do it. And third, always utilize the difficult period for maintenance of your facilities, which we exactly did. We pre most of the repair and maintenance, which we planned in the uh, later part of the financial year, decided to take up the repair and maintenance during that period, so that we remain prepared for the uh, good time uh, and we can uh, ramp up our uh, production. And also in steel industry, one thing is there, don't be afraid of uh, losses. Losses are the part of the cycle, even if they come, don't uh, get deterred uh, uh, from that. Always prepare for the uh, good time, which we exactly did. And today, you know, in first quarter, most of the steel companies, they had losses. Sale was not an exception. We had a loss of around 2,000 crore. And in second quarter, we again turned into profit. We had a profit of uh, 6, uh, 600 odd crore. And third quarter is also going to be good, given the uh, good market. And uh, also, uh, given the fact that uh, today, uh, we are a, like uh, uh, having 100% captive oil and the iron ore prices are at the peak. And also the coal prices are at the lowest, particularly from Australia, they are at the lowest. So most of the steel companies in India, they are going to give a good performance in the uh, uh, third quarter. So this is how we dealt with the COVID period. And uh, after that, most of us, most of the steel uh, uh, companies in this sector, in the steel sector, they, they dealt with very firmly. And today we find that we are all uh, in the uh, laugh at the end of the day. And uh, uh, I'm sure the year will go better than what we performed in the last financial year for most of the players in the steel industry. Uh, thank you. Nice to hear that, uh, you know, sale also as a uh, major PSU has taken so many innovative steps. I must call them innovative uh, and just to keep the morale of the employees because sale is a large 
uh, employer. So keeping the moral of the employees also is one of the factors I was told that you have taken carefully taken care of that. And thank you for that. So that sale is on a growth path now. My second question that brings us to the second question that the government has given a clarion call for Atmanivar Bharat and Make in India program. Uh, there are many people who are just, uh, you know, telling that this is the nothing but replacement of imports. But I think the strategy goes much beyond that. And it calls for a variety of initiatives on the part of the industry. I would ask you, how does SAIL plan to provide support to this call, Make in India? Uh, thank you. In fact, if you see, the progression of the Indian economy has been quite unique. We have simply moved from the agrarian society uh, to the service sector. Like uh, this uh, country used to be mainly dependent on the agriculture. And there is always a step in between, which is the manufacturing. Somehow we miss that step and we simply uh, moved from the agrarian society to uh, service society. And a uh, major portion of our GDP uh, is being uh, contributed uh, by uh, 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 this service sector. So this manufacturing, somehow we missed it in between. Now we have started putting stress on the uh, manufacturing. That is why, like uh, the call of uh, Atam Nirvar Bharat or uh, vocal for local and uh, make uh, not only for India, but for the world that is coming uh, into uh, prominence uh, 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 during this time. Uh, and also it was required as we started recovering from the corona period, the clarion call given by uh, our Honorable Prime Minister, and that had a lot of importance uh, for our uh, country. And let me tell you that steel is uh, like one industry where uh, this local, uh, 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 vocal for local is really required. Because despite having 110 million ton of the capacity, country has still been importing a uh, lot of steel uh, from uh, various uh, uh, countries. And this steel, it is not like this, it cannot be produced within the country. We can produce uh, all this steel within the country. And going forward, as we are moving towards 300 uh, billion ton uh, uh, country, this is all the more important that we should find out that what all products or what all grades of the steel are required to be imported uh, uh, in the country and uh, how we can uh, take care of uh, all these products and we can manufacture uh, them within the country. And when we look at the various areas where the imports have been happening, at times I always feel in think that there are certain grades which are currently being manufactured, but because of one reason or the other, they are not accepted by the uh, end users, particularly in the auto sector. A tendency to import because many of the companies in the auto sector, they have come from abroad and they do not have acceptance for the Indian products. I know like uh, 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 they have their affiliations, but at the same time, if they are operating within our country, they should come forward and accept the products which are being currently manufactured by the uh, Indian steel industry. So I can uh, very well uh, uh, know uh, and, and I know that the homologation is required and the Indian steel industry is prepared to go in for that uh, motion and uh, we want to uh, work very closely uh, with the uh, auto industry. This is one, like in commercial, it is there and two wheelers also, it is there that we are using the Indian steel. But when it comes to the passenger vehicles, we are importing a lot of steel from outside. And uh, second is like uh, electric steel. Of course, we have to find a solution that how to go ahead and make this electric steel within the country, whether it is CR0, geo grain oriented or non-grain oriented uh, steel is there. And uh, third is the uh, steel for the sector, particularly API grade, when we say API X80 and above 70, many of the manufacturers, they are already doing it within the country. And for 80 also, uh, we have to go in. And fourth is like our uh, head hardened rail, whether it is ST1175 uh, or it is 1080HH. So these are the two grades which now uh, railways are uh, uh, trying to uh, import. And also uh, uh, within the railways, there is uh, another area, uh, those are the LSBV. So uh, let me concentrate on three, uh, uh, four things and how SAIL has been trying to uh, help the country. As far as electric steel is concerned, we are all already there in uh, CRNO uh, segment. And as far as CRGO is concerned, uh, we have already started the discussions. And as a part of the basic research, we have already sensitized our research and development center at Ranchi 
that they should go in for the lab test and they have already ordered equipment worth rupees 20 crore for going in for the lab test and also this srtmi they are trying to come to our help srtmi sale and midhani we have decided that uh, with the help of government of india uh, we will be going in for the uh, uh, industrial level uh, 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 rolling facilities for uh, crgo and facilities uh, maybe they can be either at the princess of medhani or they can be at a place uh, say at rautila uh, as it is acceptable to all the uh, stakeholders and government of india has also agreed to uh, finances this is what i have learned and the talks have been going on uh, by srtmi with the government if it can be financed because the financing cost in itself will be somewhere around 500 crore and uh, other area is that the api grade uh, uh, plates and coils we have already developed x70 uh, in plate form and in uh, coil form we are working on it and also the higher grades uh, we have been trying to work on them and we have already carried out the trial set up at uh, round kela steel plant and uh, uh, along with this uh, this uh, head hardened facility the company has already established at our at the, at the bilai steel plant and uh, the first core trial was happened last year and uh, we wanted to go ahead with the uh, uh, core trial within this current financial year but somehow because of the non availability of expert we are not able to move but i am sure in the coming time we will be able to do it the uh, oem has assured us that they will be able to send their experts from uh, uh, 15th, uh, 15th of january so we will be able to have 1080 hh and 1175 st the heat treated rails uh, within the country uh, of course jspl has already done some work on that and they have already developed that uh, but both of us we feel taken together we can meet the requirement of the uh, 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 country in the coming time one more area mr benerji i would like to highlight is the here is the templates uh now the country is having good capacity of uh, 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 templates uh, uh, but still the imports are happening in the defective or in the secondary category which has to be stopped and uh, we have to uh, get it uh, from uh, within the country apart from this you all know that for defense sector we are already supplying a uh, good quantity of steel which earlier used to be imported likewise for construction and infrastructure uh, we have already set up a good capacity of 1.850 million ton of structures uh, at our at our uh, durgapur steel plant uh, form of medium structural mill and at our banpur uh, uh, isco steel plant in the form of the uh, uh, universal uh, section mill so uh, uh, from there also we are fully equipped to meet the requirement of the uh, indian infrastructure and uh, construction sector but here there are two important issues are there unless we address those issues it will be very difficult to become uh, atamnevar one is the availability of the raw material when i say raw material particularly i have been talking of the coking coal still country is importing close to 85 to 90% of the uh, coking coal which is required for the pf bf route unless we are able to be atamnevar in this area to some extent it will be very difficult to that we have been uh, uh, making steel with the help of uh, indigenous input so here i remember uh, under the leadership of mr partho bhattacharya the coal india started uh, 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 in 2009 10 that they will be investing lot of money in this zaria uh, action plan whereby to some extent we will be able to get coal from the domestic sources but some of that did not happen and still uh, we have been struggling Uh, to get the supplies of the domestic coking coal even we are not able to get domestic coking coal with 70 to 18% ash whereas in imported coal having a ash of just 8 to 10% and then you know it very well that uh, capital equipment the country is still dependent on capital equipment uh, whether it is coco one center plant glass furnace or our uh, uh, steel melting shop or at least 20 to 22% of the total cost of uh, putting up the facility is in the form of equipment so there also we have to uh, call or we have to take help of the uh, oems that they should come to our country and put up their facilities and we have told them that in the coming time as the country is growing to have a capacity of 300 million ton in steel there will be a lot of requirement uh, for capital equipment and we are even willing to go a step further and we are willing to enter into an mou that we will give you an opportunity to sell this material uh, in india and last time when i went to uh, dusseldorf uh, in this uh, uh, this international metal fair i gave a call to them 
that come to our country along with this uh, uh, supplying of OEM. You can come here and set up the facilities, and we will enter into MOU with you. But of course, for that you have to make investment in our country. And here uh, you can supply to other countries of the world also. Okay. So these are the two things which are really very some in which we have to look into very seriously. Only then we will be able to say that the Indian steel industry has been handling uh, handling the Atmanirbhar Bharat. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Anil ji. This was a very great uh, exposition of what the industry and uh, what the government support. what you are needing so since the time is not uh, very much there i will just end up asking you that currently the steel prices are really rising about 44% increase in the last four months and also iron ore prices are also rising which you have said is it indicative of a demand growth or a supply shortage i want your view and what is the prospect in the next year just in a few words now yes let me tell you that the uh, prices are not only rising within the country but the prices are rising about by if you see many of the orders for hr coil they have been booked at a level of 700 dollar per ton uh, cfr vietnam so that shows that the domestic prices are not only on the rise but the international prices are also there uh, of course the shortage of iron ore is just one of the reasons that the steel prices on the rise because of with the production we are not able to some of the units are not able to ramp up the production uh, so as far as sale is concerned you, you know we have the captive iron ore and there is uh, no dearth of production we have been maximizing uh, our production and also at the same time the demand is growing particularly in the infrastructure and construction sector and which we expected and going forward particularly we know the fourth quarter always remain a good period for the steel industry. demand for steel is going to rise only in the coming time in the fourth quarter we can expect that there will be much more demand for steel if we experienced in the uh, last two quarters that the second quarter of the current financial year and also the third quarter so we should be prepared for increasing the production and at the same time uh, it is not our endeavor to make a killing uh, out of the crisis we never want that but we have to go by the international prices if we we, we, we do not take the advantage somebody else will be taking the advantage so we have to keep our prices in line with the market and rightly so even uh, i feel there should not be any interference let the market forces of demand and supply uh, play and uh, give a course to the market and they will take the right course and also one thing i would like to highlight here that there was a time when we sold our steel at throwaway prices we got only 375 dollar for hr coil we exported i know i myself booked the orders in the month of april and everybody was cursing me that you are booking orders at 375 dollar now i cannot help it that's what i say that when the market is low please don't get afraid of that look for the good time continue to do the business and don't get afraid that you are into losses there will be a time when you will be making the profit so maybe today it is a good time because of the international market Uh, is high and also because the domestic demand is very very good in the infrastructure and construction sector and you have already seen that how auto has been performing for the last three months auto sector has also been doing well and it is the consequence of uh, that and i also feel that the government has taken so many steps to revive the economy and now today we are in the revival mode and as we get into more in the revival mode and there is more demand from construction and infrastructure sector steel industry is bound to do well in the coming time maybe we fear that we will be having a growth of 20% may not hold, hold good as we finish the financial year 2021 you will find that maybe we are at par or we maybe we are having a growth of 3% uh, in the current financial year as compared to previous financial year. thank you sir sir we have very uh, in fact that is very 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 reassuring uh, anil and i think this is a good news for Uh, Indian steel industry. So here we end uh, the chat session. Uh, over to Arno. Thank you, sir. We are uh, really indebted for your uh, inputs and thoughts. Uh, sir, we have uh, we we are continuing with the discussion with uh, Mr. P K Bishna, former chairman and M D R I N L. He has already joined. Uh, Mr. P K Roth, the chairman and M D of uh, Vizek Steel, has already joined. and uh, dr vinod nawal deputy md jsw steel has already joined with us mr anil anand managing director polworth india private limited has already is with us now i would request mr pk vishnoy to take it forward from here sir over to mr vishnoy okay thank you 
a very good afternoon and uh, those in a different time zone a good morning and a very warm welcome uh, to all the uh, distinguished participants eminent speakers and invited guests to this bcci conclave this afternoon in india building atmanirbhar bharat ensuring make in india future of steel industries in india and you just heard uh, say we talked about the various issues of atmanirbharta but i would like to remind you some of you would remember that used to be said at one time what is good for us steel is good for usa now that saying very much stands today in the sense that you see in 1950 or around that time both india and china were producing about a million ton of steel each today china is a billion ton and india 1/10th of it and you see they are in terms of economic growth five times bigger than us doesn't it prove the point that how important is steel for growth of any economy therefore atmanirbharta is absolutely essential if you wish to continue to grow and become a economic superpower in the world that is our aim isn't it so are we really atmanirbhar one way to define could possibly be that whatever we produce in terms of steel we consume both are equal no and that's not really true i'm sure the speaker will Uh, the speakers will dwell on it later but as you heard sale chairman talking about certain grades of steel crgo and others which are not made in india coking coal he talked about which is not uh, enough produced in india i can also mention that in terms of design and technology for certain uh, main equipment blast furnaces and uh, steel mill shops etc uh, well there are countries far ahead of us in terms of energy efficiency of our steel plants some are doing well and many other need to catch up all these issues are very much required if we uh, can call ourselves atmanirbhar so i would not come in between you and the uh, distinguished speakers but certain ground rules if i may set uh, each speaker there are three of them which have already been i believe introduced by arna and they will uh, get each uh, 15 minutes so that will be 45 minutes in the balance uh, 15 minutes will be a question and answer and wrapping up so now i hand over to my former colleague uh, mr pk rath and uh, that was number one listed in the speaker there mr rath now please uh, good afternoon sir it's very nice to have uh, the senior on the screen actually yeah and uh, respected uh, sri vishnu uh, sahab uh, our former former cmd ri dr vinod nawal deputy managing director jsw steel limited mr anil anand managing director polwar india private limited ladies and gentlemen other officers uh, present here very a very good uh, afternoon to all of you as you know that the steel industries are a great economic multiplier so we can't hear you sir properly we can't uh, actually uh, if we can see uh, is it uh, am i audible now yes 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 is it, is it quite okay yes that's okay you just turn your camera more tilt more towards uh, so that we can see your interface yeah yeah okay. that, that's okay. fine thank you yeah. sir sorry for interrupting you yeah it's quite okay yeah. it's probably not placed properly yeah. so steel industries are a great economic multiplier as we all are quite well aware of for national growth the announcement of atmanirbhar bharat abhiyan focused on boosting indigenous industrial capabilities could not have come at a better time a larger economic package which was announced to kick start the implementation of this vision for this industry this envisions 
that India should be self-sufficient and reduce imports. With the introduction of import substitution in the sector, a national call for vocal for local and becoming Atma Nirbhar Bharat, there is an urgent need to adopt technologies that are consistent with the domestic systems and processes. The government of India has initiated a 20 lakh crore stimulus package to bring back economy on course of a 5 trillion economy by 2024. This also includes structural reforms in coal and mineral sector, that is mining sector, and I am sure the reforms will lead to a self-reliant India through maximization and optimization of natural resources. The pandemic, the present pandemic situation has taught us for the self-reliance, for the self-reliance, the implementation of industry 4.0 at the earliest. This is a new industrial revolution through smart manufacturing for improving process and process and yield. The opt for digitization of the activities swiftly and take quick steps for implementing the new technology that is industrial internet of things is an advanced technology which enables faster and better decision making. Employees can take decisions based on in-depth data-driven actionable insight rather than instinct. One of the major elements in the concept of Atmanirbhar Bharat is the substitution of imports. For achieving this, steel industry has to identify a few special products which are being imported and this can be substituted through domestic supply. Capital goods are now the fourth largest import category after crude steel, oil, crude, steel, crude oil, electronics and gold. The approximate value of import of capital goods is in 2018-19 was around $26 billion, with China taking the top slot of around 32% of it. To, to improve the capability of various segments of a capital goods sector, that is fabricated uh, fabrication of metal pro products, forced metal products and transformers, material handling equipments, firefighting equipments, and printing machinery, etc. And to indigenously manufacture these finished products and replace imports. India imported around 7.5 million tons of steel in financial year 20, valued at 46,216 crores around. A few items, namely CRGO, steel of 0.23 million ton only, valued at 1,763 crores. Auto grade or special alloy steels or special steel, around 0.3 million ton, valued at around 2,282 crores. Approximately, that is uh, more than what we could uh, imagine about the HRCs and plates and pipes of 0.45 million ton produced valued at 3,627 crores. These steels, we should be able to manufacture with the available technology un under the guidance of R&D or under our special, some kind of a special technological transfer from the other countries, which the Indian government should aim at. The coming to the steel capacity buildup, the, our objective of uh, 300 million ton capacity buildup will not be fruitful, will not be, a, 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 will not be in sight if the government or if we don't take the action of collaborating with the other manufacturers, other equipment manufacturers for the main for the main main products, product, uh, production shops like blast furnace, steel mill shop, and center plant and cocoa one, etc. We have to have the technology present here. We have to have the equipment present here. Then only we will be able to build up the industry. To consider more investments in R&D and developing capabilities in the field of design and engineering, the steel sector will rely, unless otherwise the steel sector will rely heavily on import of technology and imports of equipment. To enable capacity addition, steel manufacturers need to collaborate with OEMs for setting up facilities in India in order to be self-reliant. Another important area to be tapped by steel industry is the requirement of oil and gas industry also. Today, India has about 250 million tons of refining capacity. In the coming 10 years, the capacity may go up to 400 to 500 million tons. 
Consequently, the pipeline network is going rapidly. Development of steel grades and the sizes required to cater to these needs of this industry has to be taken up in a big way to minimize imports of these products. The government is already working on multimodal infrastructural projects like Bharat Mala, Sagar Mala, and a dedicated freight corridor in the logistics sectors, which will benefit the industry. Once these projects are completed, both production cost and time will be reduced. The rolling process is the most common industrial process which is used for making large length cross section like angles, sections, foil sheet, foils, sheets, etc. And these rolls mostly are imported. So around this import comes to around 533 uh, uh, million million dollar in 2018-19. And this is also another area where efforts are to be put in to minimize, to manufacture those roles in our country so that the import can be minimized. Finally, a combination of initiative, including investment in R&D, introduction of industry for implementation of a digitization, facilitating policy atmosphere, global quality standards, a public procurement policy, skill development, and supporting marketing mechanisms can create an environment for fostering the growth in the direction of Atmanirbhar Bharat. Finally, I would conclude my speech saying that if at all we have to look at a plant construction, we have to see in our domestically, we have to look at the neighborhood in our, during, in our neighborhood to see that those equipments we bring in and we set up our plant. Today, unfortunately, although we have crossed and we are producing more than 100 million tons of steel, still for the equipments, basically, we go around the globe. And see, look for the technology, look for the yeah. equipment. So that should be that should be our first step in order to in order to in order to make ourselves up in the river. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Rath, and for keeping within the time. Next, I invite uh, Dr. Vinod Naval. Uh, let me say that uh, I have a pleasant memory of meeting uh, him, maybe about uh, ten or fifteen years ago. Uh, once, I think, in Vizag, another time in uh, Bangalore. So, Mr. Nawal, looking so young that I couldn't recognize him. <laughs> so, Dr. Nawal, <laughs> over to you, and I look forward to hearing you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon to all of you. It's my honor to be here with all of you at this e-conclave organized by the Bengal Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Afternoon, sir. We had quite insightful session and we have been listening to the stalwarts of the steel industry on a very relevant topic, building Atma Nirbhar Bharat, ensuring make in India, future of steel industry in India. Mission of Atma Nirbhar Bharat, a self-reliant India will be steered and facilitated by the steel industry, which in turn will also lead to India's growth at large. More or less, quite much has been shared and covered on this topic by Mr. Anil Kumar Chaudhary, Chairman Sale, and Mr. P.K. Rath, Chairman and MD RNL. Therefore, you may find me repetitive on various aspects. However, I will try throw some more light and re-emphasize on the same. It's well known that COVID-19 disrupted business operations globally. It has impacted almost all industries, especially the ones, the substantial supply chain dependence on China. It's no different for steel sector. While the road to recover on or arriving to the normal business state is expected to be slow, but the Indian steel industry needs to find its right balance through the right mix of channels to restore and recover faster from this pandemic. There could not have been a better time than now for the Atmanirbhar Bharat Abhyan, focus on boosting indigenous industrial and manufacturing capabilities. In fact, a large Economy package has been already been announced to kickstart the implementation of this vision for the steel industry, 
which has repeatedly mentioned by all my speakers before me honorable prime minister had announced the vision of production 300 million ton steel by 2030 31 now is the right time to debate it and make it reality let's talk about the challenges for steel industries first of all the cost of capital is very high in india comparison to the world when it comes to creating steel capacity the infrastructure of road rail and transport is inadequate and in poor condition at the same time logistic cost is way too, too high more than 2 to 3 times if you compare with our competitors in the world ensuring robust infrastructure and logistic support for the steel sector as logistic continues to be an important parameters for development in steel sector identifying areas to cost reduction and cost avoidance across the supply chain is going to be a key in efficiency differmenter quality of raw material especially poor quality of iron ore is also one of the area of concern which affects both efficiency and cost of production the ultimate mission of 300 million ton production by 2030 31 is a distinct dream as not enough steps have been taken to maintain the momentum at the same time necessary steps need to be taken to align this mission with the india's steel consumption it's a known fact that the india abundant iron ore and mineral reserves are its strength at the same time due to various regions comprising law regulations and environmental norms are not supporting the industry therefore there is a shortage of iron ore today and resulting in high price of iron ore as of today i am in incompetent i am in complete agreement with mr susim banerji when he says that the imports are pro- proving to be a red block to a road block to our journey towards atmanirbhar bharat and better availability of steel therefore imports substitution is an imperative and very critical for india the current production and capacity utilization is below the re- required mark there is an urgent case for capacity augmentation which requires fresh investment either by the existing or new producers and through the fresh fdi the focus should be on improving our fresh products import capabilities instead of raw material for example iron or pellets and semi exports we should focus more on the finished goods coal is one of the concern for steel industry mostly managed through the imports whereas we have sizable reserves which needs to be explored and to be made available for steel industry for producing the steel in india as a reasonable reasonable cost india is currently currently the world's second largest producer of steel and is all set to become the second largest consumer of steel steel is a strong pillar of development as this sector generates large scale employment and contributes immensely to the ultimate objective of atmanirbhar bharat steel industry contributes around 2% of gdp the indirect and unseen contribution of steel is much larger in indian economy owing to the dependence of other sector on steel the steel industry employs nearly half a million people directly and 2 million people indirectly the current per capita steel consumption could be stretched more than 74 kg in last 5 years it needs to be double triple to maintain focus on the targets of 300 million ton as well as to driving our aspirations of becoming a 5 trillion economy however a few positive that we help it may help induce st-
still demand in india a large but younger population size a rising middle class expanding urbanization a favorable climate for infrastructure and investment and reforms in financial sector the vision to achieve a 5 trillion economy by 2024 entails investment in infrastructure sector including several steel intensive sector like smart cities and housing for all and 100% electrification various center ministers ministries departments are also being encouraged to improve the usage of steel across government projects best in class greenfield capacity development in steel sector will be the key to meet requirements of supporting the mission of million 5 trillion economy the greenhouse gas co2 is most relevant to the steel industry if we analyze steel industry figures for current co2 emission of 2.4 tons per ton of crude steel is quite high in comparison to the current global co2 emission of 1.85 tons per ton of crude steel published by the world steel association there will be an additional challenge of indian steel industry to adhere or become carbon neutral by 2000 sorry by 2, 2050 for the same simple reason that steel comes under the difficult to decarbonize sector as coal is integral steel making as a responsible industry we have to be watchful of our carbon footprint through improved and mitigation technology inventions interventions like hydrogen for steel making and carbon sequestration and carbon capture store utilization to control and reduce co2 emission as long as and as far as possible india steel company indian steel industries companies annual r&d expenditure is less than 0.6% of their gross turnover which is way too low in comparison to r&d expenditure of world's leading steel companies which is in the range of 1 to 2% of their gross turnover promoting an in- investing into world class r&d infrastructure will enable steel sector to to not only adhere to global benchmark or quality tqm but also to withstand stricter environmental norms and sanctions the narrative to cheap labor is absurd and is no longer relevant in the right of low productivity in light of the low productivity availability of the skilled and smart manpower will be crucial to remain competitive for achieving global benchmark of quality and focus on the job training would be the key the manpower productivity matrix of indian steel industry ranges as high as 1221 tons per person and as low as 230 ton per person whereas the average productivity levels is at 541 ton per person in order to become self reliant and compete com, compete with the global steel players a constant exercise to evaluate the core skills of the existing workforce and viable avenues for reskilling upskilling and multi skilling are needed to be created and sustained developing learning culture in an organization will help in minimizing the skill gap and improve manpower productivity innovating new technology for steel production is still at a very low pace in india primarily due to a lack of investment steel manufacturers should refocus their internal culture to build a digital analytical ready rec- workforce thereby boosting the competitive positions of the indian steel industry 
technology integration across a steel plant boosts the labor productivity in efficiency sorry adaptability and sustainability of production and supply chain system integrated with the existing business models and processes for instance advanced analytic and machine learning models play with a wide range of data to provide real time processes simulation and process insight through the continuous laboratory integrates the view of the value chain and helps optimize the production for quality cost and productivity some firms are ready already deploying artificial intelligence ai for adequate production and minimizing losses many others are exploring opportunities to upgrade business intelligence using ai and analytic at the end i would say that along with imports substitution the inclusive call to action given by honorable prime minister modi for vocal for local to become global and for becoming atmanirbhar bharat steel industry quickly needs to embrace and get comfortable with the latest technology that are consistent with india's systems and process in addition to existing pos- positive positives of 2017 national steel policy the government is in the process of curating a comprehensive steel policy in sync with atmanirbhar bharat mission to promote higher steel production and per capita consumption hence now is the time for all of us to refocus and rework on our internal culture in order to prepare a digital ready and digital savvy workforce and help indian steel industry in achieving a strong and stable hold on the global map as a responsible corporate jsw would like to be an inclusive partner in process for atmanirbhar bharat abhiyan to contribute to the mission 300 million ton and cater to the growing steel demand across the global i am confident that the deliberations during this e conclave and fruitful interactions with the industry peers will help the steel industry to drive a path for sustainable growth i wish you a wonderful and productive day ahead thank you very much um thank you dr davul for your enlightening uh, uh, presenting your thoughts and uh, i will now uh, invite the next speaker mr anil anand mr anand you'll also have 15 minutes if you could please uh, start now thank you Arnav, we are not able to see you here, Mr. Anand. Yes, sir. I'm calling. Okay. Yeah, Mr. Anil Anand. Uh, we are calling, Mr. Anand. Okay. Sir, I've informed his office. Is okay. Is okay now. Can you hear no, me? Can, yeah, we can hear you, but uh, please put your video on. Okay. We can't see you. We can hear your voice, Mr. Anand. I don't know why camera is not getting on. Anyway, I'll start with this. Okay, I'll be. Okay, I'll start now. 
Okay. Like more time if I can. No, this video is not getting on. I don't know why. You will have to reconnect. If you reconnect, sometimes that happens. It's. Uh, can you see me now? No. No, no sir. You, have, you, you switch off and reconnect. You may. You will okay. get on. You can. The camera on me. Share screen. Arnav, you could tell him that uh, you can disconnect and reconnect. Yes, sir. Hmm? Hmm? Okay. How to leave? Yes, sir. He is uh, reconnecting, I think. Ah, now uh, it will come. It happens sometimes. Okay. Okay. It was a wonderful deliberation, Dr. Noel and Dr. Uh, and Mr. P. K. Rath. We were uh, uh, really uh, indebted to all of you for the thoughts. We are just waiting for uh, Ms. Anand to join. Let us take some time. Uh, Have you been able to connect? Yes, sir. Uh, he is joining. He is joining. I can see it from here. Yeah, okay. Mr. Anand, you have joined. You just have to put your video on. Why yeah, I, are you logging in? I don't know. The, this video is not getting on somehow. I really don't know. Okay, okay. Anyway, then. Anyway, please continue, sir. Okay. You, you may ask some of your colleague to uh, log in from uh, from their mobile phone or so in the same Zoom link, and mm -hmm. you can talk from there also. No, but okay, I can. Maybe, maybe, maybe I think I'll I'll start without an uh, video. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. I'll okay. Thank you. Okay. Sir. Yeah. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I would like to first thank Bengal Chamber of Commerce for giving me this opportunity to present our point of view on Atmanibar Bharat and Make in India initiative. This is really an excellent initiative of this conclave and I am pleased to part of it with such a wonderful gathering. I am really blessed to have worked uh, with stalwarts of the steel industry, uh, sales chairman Mr. Chaudhary, Mr. Mr. Rath, chairman RINL, Dr. Vinod Dawal, Mr. Sushim Banerjee, and uh, many more in the steel industry. So the topic of Make in India is very, very important in the contest for the steel industry and also keeping in view the target of achieving 300 million ton by 2030 or 2031. Our endeavor should be to create a complete ecosystem here in India to sustain the Atam Nirbhar Bharat concept in its true sense. From the perspective of the steel industry, the ecosystem I am referring to should consist of all small, medium steel producers, integrated steel producers, suppliers starting from raw material to the plant equipment, including the technology providers. It is not only about simple manufacturing or fabrication. I mean by simply doing this, it may not be easy to sustain in the global village that we are operating in now. We should think beyond this. The ecosystem should be integrated and driven by technology for, for long-term sustenance, and that will be true Make in India, which eventually lead to Atam Nirbhar Bharat. In the spirit of Make in India, Paul Worth and SMS Group have created an excellent world-class manufacturing facility in Bhuvneshwar with an investment of about 250 crores way back in 2014. In the essence of true Make in India, we are not just doing manufacturing there. We are combining the technology to make equipment for the steel industry, including the key components. The brief uh, view of the facility is this is a world-class manu world manufacturing facility with uncompromising quality as the central theme, using the competencies and skill sets of highly committed personnel. Our, this facility is located in Khurda uh, on the outskirts of Bhuvneshwar. The combined production shop floor area we have is around 243,000 tons square feet and the complete site area is about 700,000 tons square feet area. Apart from the 
core technology is installed we also have some special technologies like welding of stainless steel special alloys and copper welding stress relieving treatment high velocity oxy fuel coating nickel and nickel alloy electroplating gearbox and cylinders refurbishment at this local uh, facility we have generated a direct employment of about 800 plus people and many more in the indirect employment i am very pleased to share that we have up till today uh, produced more than 800 equipment as a fresh one and more than 4000 equipments we have refurbished for the industry few equipment which are manufactured are ladle transfer cars google valve for the bof shop lower seal wall blast furnace shell dewatering drum material hopper rotary hearth for wheel forging plant electric arc furnace upper shell and many many more i am also very pleased to share with you that 25% of our production is being exported to our global customers the key factors for the success of this initiative are the design and manufacture of core components for steel works and rolling mills under one roof short distance between the close intermeshing of engineering and production heavy fabrication facilities we have innovative machining methods and powerful cm systems we have manufacturing with the powerful machine tools and a dedicated workforce which has been trained by our colleagues from europe while on this platform i would also like to make a make a request to the industry that the people who have invested we should be given some kind of preference at the time of selection of a technology provider that we have created a facility here not merely on the, the price front the people who have not invested in the country or who are not present in the country by my presence here i am not only uh, localizing my equipment also i am providing 24 by 7 after sale service support as well with all the top integrated steel producers we have this uh, this system working on today so some kind of support must be given to the companies who have invested heavily in the country and we also have a plans for further growth in the country uh, chairman sale mentioned a very good point of uh, entering into mou we are open to such uh, uh, initiatives this we would also like this support from the public sector as well as, well as from the private sector as well and lastly i would like to say make in india is i would like to say as an indian true indian i would say india for india this is what i wanted to say thank you very much <clears throat> thank you mr anand now uh, we have another 10 minutes wherein uh, we could uh, answer some questions if we get from the audience in the meantime uh, while we have few minutes maybe i could ask a question and maybe each one of you could please try and answer you see i was uh, we are number 2 in the world in terms of steel production but uh, japan is just behind us if you uh, really see and japan is a very small country and they have no raw material of any kind they have had no problem in rising mm -hmm. with the levels of uh, steel production that they have in india we still keep on talking about that we don't have coking coal we don't have high grade iron ore do you know what japan has done they have taken equity shares in various coking coal and iron ore uh, uh, comp uh, mining companies in the world 5 10 15 <laughs> 10%. <laughs> why aren't we doing some such thing maybe uh, first uh, Dr. Naval can answer, and then Mr. Rath, and then Mr. Anand. Dr. Naval, please. Yeah, sorry. I know JSW was trying at one time. So why don't we acquire minority or some stakes in non-coking coal and other uh, iron ore, higher-grade uh, mines abroad, Australia and various other places? iron ore uh, we have plenty in india our focus mainly is in india for iron ore on coal we are definitely looking for if there is any opportunity we will work on that a higher grade iron ore i was referring to more than 
बट इन इंडिया ऑल्सो इट इज हाई ग्रेड एंड बाय बेनिफिशियन टेक्नोलॉजी वी कैन मेक इट हाई ग्रेड ऑफ दैट एंड वी हैव प्लेंटी इन इंडिया आर एन ओर सो देट इज एक्चुअली वी शुड फोकस आर एन ओर इन इंडिया ओनली बट डेफिनेटली वी आर लुकिंग फॉर टू गेट एनी अपॉर्चुनिटी देयर वी विल वर्क ऑन दैट okay thank you mr rath any point of view second, second is uh, government should work on jharia belt if we can mm. explore that and that is a very low hanging fruit if we can work out you're right this jharia thing is long standing thing burning it burns in our heart as well when you e cooking coal is such a high grade burning there there are several political other issues there but you are absolutely right the government has to help Mr. Rath, any point of view on that? Uh, yes, I do have one actually because if you see the India's position as far as iron ore is concerned, uh, certainly we are in a well, probably the the uh, one of the major shares we have of the world. But uh, why should we go uh, to go to the uh, to the other other side of the world when you do have our resources? But if you see as a public sector, uh, what I could understand at this moment is. Uh, the concept with which we started and the concept with which we live live now, and uh, without being a a a, a securitization having a securitization of raw material, really we are uh, we 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 lead a very difficult life uh, as as an industry. Are coming to sort of coal when the 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 the, the ideas got changed and we become more and more uh, uh, business oriented. we certainly went in for 25% of our share in a coal mine in uh, mozambique and which we are uh, at the moment uh, we we are into it and we have also uh, increased our production there but uh, certainly sir the type of coal that is required for the blast furnace technology and all that uh, probably it is not suiting and uh, we are more dependent on other coal like you know from australia and other countries australia and america and other countries Uh, certainly sir your point i do appreciate that we should uh, go in for with a uh, go in for uh, you know an equity shareholder of other mines and uh, other 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 mines and all but point is that it should be it should be given a, a degree of a freedom and other things i should talk about and uh, probably it is not the right forum i will say uh, to, to have uh, that kind of orientation and uh, now if you see the ministries we actually ministry also is sir going has gone a far step to australia to, to russia to explore some coal mines and uh, uh, cooking coal mines to have uh, more of a security for our raw material in our country and uh, hopefully sir in the kind of coming days things will change and uh, certainly we will be looking towards uh, you know having uh, uh, the security of raw material for each of integrated player uh, 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 where we do play a role actually rinl plays a role okay thank you mr rod the russian thing seems to be interesting mr anand any particular thoughts you have to share sorry sir i missed the question because my i was disconnected and i had to reconnect by the time so no no issue I, no issue i i missed the question important role in terms of supplying some key equipment to the steel industry my question was that japan which doesn't have any iron ore and doesn't have any coking coal is uh, the third largest producer just behind india and if they could sort of progress so much without any indigenously available raw materials and what they have done is you know they have bought shares in so many mines all over the world for coking coal and iron ore don't india do the same thing in acquiring uh, stakes in some of these key supplier of raw material what's your view not only that sir i think india should uh, in my opinion india should go for uh, source uh, for the securing mines for the coking coal which is very important the more important is what japanese have done they develop the technology right for producing top grade of steel at a very very low prices right that that should be i think more importance uh, for india to go in for uh, besides uh, securing raw material mines across the world i think from the indian perspective i think the more emphasis should be given to the technology and to increase the level of technology in india okay good uh, thank you my view. Uh, thank you now we have another few minutes left and since no other questions come from the audience i'd like to ask one more question to all of you you see we are a member of this climate uh, change the paris accord and uh, steel is the most polluting industry in the world 
and we are talking about steel uh, capacity increase all the time because if we have to grow the steel capacity has to grow isn't there this conflict here and um, how do we serve our um, uh, commitment to the uh, climate uh, uh, control in paris and increase our steel capacity maybe each one of you mr anand what do you think sir <laughs> the point with the question you have asked we are in the process of crea uh, creating uh, a technology for the green steel the pilot uh, project is being developed in europe right now so i cannot share more on that but i would uh, as an indian and also into the steel industry for so long i would like to say from the government's perspective and also it should be then attitude from the steel producers itself to ensure that uh, the all the polluting norms are to be reduced right and also the government should comes with the more tough norms onto the uh, onto the uh, this polluting levels this is my view mr rath you are being told to you know to more closely supervise what is your view how do you manage this contradiction of climate change it's, it's, and capacity i i i i pretty well go with you sir but the point is that not even today not today the steel industry as such if you see a one ton of steel that we produce around 3 and 1/2 to 4 tons of waste is including gas uh, including gas and other so we generate and probably if you see the biggest challenge to the steel industry is that uh, the utilization or to, to recycling of this waste actually that is the biggest challenge to the steel industry at this moment let us talk about the solid waste that we are generating we have got some technology now at this moment and in for that matter rinl is also going in for a bricketing and pelletizing plants or pellet, pellet plant actually from the waste materials uh, probably other companies i i heard that jsw has also has uh, has has a plant of that kind so sir we are now going in for that waste utilization now coming to the gases as far as concerned sir the, we have got the technology but uh, the uh, fulfilling the norms at this moment really is very difficult whatever the norm was there previously and what the norm is there now there is a, it is a, it is a stringency or the criticality has gone many factor many many fold actually now uh, we have to we have to observe uh, uh, our uh, pp our pp pps and all that things should be under control uh, they have become very strict and uh, we have got the technology sir we have spent around 16 to 1700 crores of rupees actually on these equipments only to see that we maintain the maintain the parameters and uh, to tell you that uh, yes sir the industry has got a challenge and the equipments are also uh, well developed or well well manufactured and they have to be brought in actually to see that this uh, uh, this uh, pollution uh, polluting uh, elements uh, of the flue gases or whatever or the uh, in the, in the effluents uh, that the cyanides and other materials are to be put under control uh, only we have to follow the norms sir and there is no doubt it is a challenging task and uh, uh steel plant if it still has to exist still has to take care of this there is no doubt in this it is a it is it is a sad side of the steel making there is no doubt in this but we have to we have to absorb the technology to take care of this that is the requirement sir thank you mr rad dr navel uh, what is your view on this managing the paris accord and the growing steel requirements how do we manage that so this is a very relevant point and we can't avoid it one hand we want to go 300 million ton capacity and all the industry they have the responsibility uh, there are two things one is co2 2.5 ton in india whereas advanced country 1.85 because they are using recycling lot of scrap our that situation will come after say 15 20 years but we have to adopt the technology how we can bring down the consumption of the carbon second solid waste We are today the ninety percent adjustable steel, but recently we got lot of uh, through our R and D, LD slag can be created river sand alternate for construction, and we are very much you know uh, working on that. And within next one year, we are going to be ninety eight percent utilization of that. Today we are ninety percent. We are going to be ninety eight percent. and that is going to be a big big achievement so far bf slag can be converted into cement as well as river sand alternate but ld slag is a one of the achievement now we are uh, uh, experimented and we applied for bis to give the certification and they allowed 50% use 
but love will approach for 100% use as an alternative to the river scent so with this our solid waste utilization is going to be 98% so that is That's a good achievement but co2 we have to find the solution by technology we can't continue like this uh, thank you dr nabil i can understand that this is the dilemma of development and uh, most of the nations which have reached certain stage of development have also faced that only thing is a little later in the age therefore there are higher restrictions on us and i must say that we have crossed that time limit of 3 uh, 315 i would hand thank over thank you sir now. and i must thank all my speakers today for enlightening i have learned a lot i have been retired now more than 10 years 11 years so it was good to catching up with the steel uh, and learning something today and thank, thank you sir for- thank you very much the dj yeah. thank you thank, thank you, you sir thank you thank you sir we thank are you, sir. thank you everyone thank you chairman sel mr chaudhary thank you mr pk bishnoi sir former md rinl thank you mr pk raj chairman and md rinl thank you dr vinod noel deputy md jsw cell limited thank you mr anil anand managing director paul worth india private limited we are ending this session right now exactly after 2 minutes 3 minutes we are coming back with business session 2 indian iron ore industry strategies to combat the supply concerns and other constraints growth which would be moderated by mr pk mukherjee co chairman of minerals and mining committee and former md of sesagwa limited see you after 3 minutes thank, thank you so thank you